Hello and welcome to the JB Font channel. I am your host, James Fauntleroy. The JB Font channel is available on all major podcast platforms, so go ahead and subscribe there. Also part of the Revolutionary Blackout Network, so you can find me on there on Sundays and Thursdays. And if you have not already, you can also subscribe to my Substack at jbfont.substack.com so you're aware of all email notifications as well as whenever I upload clips or have any live streams or write articles that you can find me there so this is a special showing of the tour that i had with the real orlando farm and yes you hear me say garden a few times throughout the video but i actually meant to say farm because they are literally growing food so that they can help and feed the unhoused so uh, this is just the intro so that you guys can see that, yes, this was prior to a couple days ago. Uh, I have been so grateful to the people at Rio Orlando for having me and being able to show this farm off so that people like you can see this and be inspired to see exactly what they're doing and maybe it can inspire you in your county or your city or your state in order to do something similar. And so I wanted to just come in and give my hellos to all of you. Uh, and so this is in Orange County. Uh, the real Orlando is doing great work out there. They are growing food and then they cook the food that they grow and they actually distribute it to the unhoused within areas near downtown Orlando. So they are doing the damn thing out there. So if you guys have not already, go ahead and go to their Instagram and subscribe to Real Orlando. And while you're at it, go to the People's Free Kitchen as well. They are doing amazing work. And I just want to give a huge shout out to all the people of Real Orlando. Without you guys, I would not be able to see this. And... It was actually a fun experience. By the way, the snap peas, they were killing it. So with that being said, I just want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. And also, I will put the link to Real Orlando in the description below, as well as their cash app. So you guys can donate to them, if at all possible, to help them continue to do the work that they do. So... With all that being said, we're going to roll the tape, and I'll see you guys at the end. Have a great one. Moving away from the wood garden. Oh, garden. Uh, it's not like a hobby that we're trying to do. Okay. It's a farm. It's a farm, yeah. Okay. This is for, like, building the skills towards food sovereignty, mm -hmm. um, giving the people, like, the way to have the means of production in their own that is beautiful, uh, yeah. Yeah, and this isn't just, you know, like, I want to run away from everything and have a, a garden and mm -hmm. feed myself with, like, four plots of land. I, of course. This is more, like, community building and, like, having a space to, like, bring people together, give back to the community, and also share with others. Okay. Like, have a, a reciprocal nature with the community. But um, uh, as far as... Um, if you can give me, uh, who, like, what are these that you're growing here? Yeah, so, um, these are mustard greens right here. Mm -hmm. They're doing all right. They're kind of, um, over here. There's some carrots on the right side. These are carrots? Yeah, some carrot tops you can see. Oh, okay. Um, the tops of some of them here. This is a tiny little one. But okay, I see. This yeah, big yeah, guy. yeah. Okay, cool. And All right. Probably some more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me find you a good one. Oh, this one's good. Yep, here I see them. Yeah. These little carrot yep. tops. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So they'll be ready in a bit. Um, back here is Cuban oregano. Cuban and oregano. See them? Very them. beautiful. Yeah, it's very aromatic if you want to. Okay. Give it a little sniff. These are kind of doing rough, but... Uh, it's so good. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah. oh this would go great in, in, in a really good pasta. Yeah, or like a big, like, um, sauce 
be kind of like sweet though, you know, like a... Yeah. They also have a lot of like herbal medicinal purposes. Yeah. Like tea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as, as like for instance, yeah. Like when it comes to oregano, I have oregano oil mm -hmm. at home. So sometimes I put it in my tea, mm -hmm. things like that, because it's kind of anti-inflammatory, yeah. things like that. Exactly. But yeah, so this is some of the things that people can even grow in their backyard and then distribute among their, their community, right? Exactly. I think that's something that's great. So uh, you guys can tell me a little bit more about what else you're growing here? Yeah, so um, something, okay, I'll just stay to the crops, but there's a couple different areas of the farm. This is the main, like, mm -hmm. you know, produce. Produce. Uh, growing vegetables and stuff like that. We have okay. a couple compost areas, and then we're working on, like, a perennial section where we're going to have a place for plants to kind of just grow on their own. Oh, okay. And we harvest whenever they're ready, but it's not as a structure. Okay. So and these are sugar snap peas. Sugar yeah. snap peas. Should we, yeah. should we harvest them? Um, I would... I think Hammer already got the ones that are mostly ready, but I'm not sure. Some of these are... Yeah, so these are sugar snap peas. Did you harvest mm -hmm. this already? No, not so much this week. Um, okay. Um, it wasn't a lot, but it's the flowering too. Yeah, they're gorgeous. These yeah. are in the bean family and all of them yeah. are like this. They're beautiful. Wow, this is so cool. And they're delicious. If you'd like to taste one that's probably ready, they're really nice and fresh. Oh snap, I get the taste I get to eat here? Yeah, yeah. No, they're like prawn cheese. Prawn cheese. <laughs> good lord, this is good. And sweet too. Yeah. Man, this stuff is great. Yeah. And then we got some Everglades tomatoes coming in. I may not have to stay around here too long because I may end up eating your entire harvest. That is fine. Yeah. So they're still coming in. Are these tomatoes? Bit. Yeah, these are Everglades tomatoes. Oh my gosh. They're coming in slow, but um, it's been pretty chilly. But so yeah. something that we're trying to work on also is pruning mm -hmm. them so that they continue to grow upward mm -hmm. and get. Um, nice and full. Oh, these here are mm -hmm. beautifully lit. Whew. Wow. Bright red. Yeah. Um, so there's a oh. Man, I'm so glad I came out here. Um, we're so glad to have you here. Yeah. Those are some bright oh. ones down there, mm -hmm. too. I'm so excited. Yeah. And can you just explain for the viewers, like, what's the benefit of people, like, What's the benefit of people following your lead, especially in places like, of course, we're in Orange County. What about places like Volusia County or um, in Osceola and places like that? Like, can you, like, can you guys just expand on that? Like, the benefits that would be if there were more groups like yours. So one of the things that I was mentioning with like the gardening versus farming, right, and like mm -hmm. sovereignty, is that we're not. We don't have the goal that we want to grow all of our food right here and only eat off of this land. Like, that is um, unrealistic and, like, you know, there's going to be a lot of waste associated with that and it's just not going to meet our, like, nutritional needs and stuff. True. So one of the goals is to have multiple farms or, like, work with other farms and, like, trade or, you know, compare produce that's grown or, or greens that are grown and stuff like that. So that it's not just, you know, we are growing everything in this one location. We're, like, partnering with people in this different community. So if people from those other different counties um, had things of, like, this scale, then you could, like, grow, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a communal way and, like, meet needs through other people's um, harvests and stuff like that, not just in this one location. Mm -hmm. um, in a general sense, things like this really help. Uh, local pollinators and, and helps the ecosystem at large in like many different ways but mm -hmm. um, one of the best things is just like giving people that ability to have the means of the production in their hands and say yeah. like my hands over the course of a couple months grew this food that now I'm going to consume like this is all you know from beginning to end mm -hmm. my labor was put into this yeah um, so I feel like that in general is like a pretty revolutionary practice um, to give people I think it's also more impactful in like, uh, not more impactful, but impactful in the um, small communities where maybe like, like we can't see like a ton of people with like smaller gardens, but like mm -hmm. in small communities and like that are 
planned out where this uh, family grows this, this family grows that, or maybe a group of families grows all on the same land, it's much easier to actually make it possible to rely on the things that you grow mm -hmm. just because of you know living in a smaller community that can probably devote more time to it. Mm -hmm. um, and because small communities are often more impacted by like food deserts, right. like lack of like, like grocery stores with fresh produce, like mm -hmm. especially in the south, there's a ton of like rural places where like they're surrounded by farmland, but like their grocery store they have is like the Dollar General, mm -hmm. which is like you know that offers produce but of what quality right yeah um, and so it's like places like that fresh produce really can go a long way where they don't have like adequate adequate grocery stores um, where they have to drive really far to, to get it um, mm -hmm. and so it's like a lot easier to just buy from gas stations and what have you so Absolutely. yeah just be warm, like impactful in like different ways for people in those like small the, communities there's also the concern of things like uh pesticides herbicides mm -hmm. We know that one of the biggest uh, companies in this country is ones like Monsanto, right? And they are a just a horrible company that really just exploits and it harms us, it really. And so this is also kind of a, a really a way to keep communities healthier by not only having a farm like this to grow naturally, but also... Uh, you know, making sure that we don't ingest as many chemicals that really what the, the capitalist system really wants us to do so that they can say, oh, well, you have this issue. Okay, let me medicate you with exactly. this to combat this issue that we already gave exactly. you. Exactly, and that's something that Ophelia was talking about too, like the herbal and the business properties of some of the plants. A holistic type of approach, right? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take away from like, where they don't have a lot of access to them, a lot of that medicine can be prevented. Yes, absolutely. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you guys, ask you all about is, uh, as far as uh, have you tried to see about beekeeping and things like that to, to um, help with the pollination? And yeah. Um, I you smiled a lot when I, I said like that. Apples. You were like, oh, love, bees! Yeah. <laughs> So the farm has only been around since last June, I believe, is when we started breaking ground. This is good for since last June, though. Right, yeah. This is a lot. Yeah, it's been incredible, but just having this space like that is a pretty new thing for us. So I don't believe having like an apiary for bees has been something that um, we prioritize just because there's been so much to do, you know, getting the farm off the ground and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say for a fact if that's something that we're moving Towards, but I am pretty sure. So, um, the man that leads the farm, he used to work with another urban farm closer to downtown. Ooh, sugar <laughs> I didn't eat breakfast this morning, so <laughs> yeah. you you are now my friend. You are now my favorite. We had some so, so some, yeah. some snacks as well in the in the, that we always bring. Oh, thank you. Yeah. These are really good, right? man. Like, can you imagine with just a little bit of um. Just a little bit of uh, olive oil, a little bit of salt, pepper, maybe just a little bit of garlic, saute these, uh, right? Like edamame type thing? Mm. I'm not a fan of edamame though. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. the they tried to serve me, serve it to me at this bougie restaurant. I was like, mm -mm, no, it ain't hitting. But this is hitting. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that. But this is really good. There we go. No, you know. I don't want to misspeak, but. James was asking about bees and apiary stuff. I was just going to mention that you, like, had experience that with Zion yeah. at the other urban farm, not associated with the organization, but since the, this farm has only been around for less than a year, it hasn't been something that we've been prioritizing, but I don't know if that's something that, like, mm -hmm. in the long term is... Me, applicable. personally, I don't actually know much about bees and... Are you... Um, I don't, um... I think I know the basics, but definitely not enough um, for the problems that often come up with bees. And also, like, harvesting and packaging the honey and things like that, that's definitely, like, a larger thing. If we, someone comes along that wants to contribute and knows all about it, that would be great. Um, we already have, like, a ton of amazing pollinators in this space, so it would be a great addition. Yeah, the bees are here. 
Yeah. Bees and, and other pollinators are here. Hopefully, okay. a lot of these um, pumpkin Ooh, flowers, a lot of the time have. Okay, these are pumpkins. Have bees inside of them. Yeah, they're seminal. Oh my gosh. Pumpkin. Okay, I didn't even notice. Yeah, this is kind of one of the biggest ones, probably. Okay. A lot of them are. The bees red yet. Okay. You see these little ones there? Yeah. Um, but they have these gigantic yellow flowers that are kind of like, oh yeah, you can see the little bees nestled in on them. Yeah, too. they're on their, I would say. Because I know bees will fall asleep in them too. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. I've seen them. But they're not. So, they're not, just as they used any. To be, like the big yellow flowers were like the size of my head. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So just that anybody is watching, if you know any local beekeepers that want to partner with this, this, uh, this organization, in order to, you know, help for pollination and as well as to create honey, then, you know, especially for the people who need it, go ahead and um, I'll put my email in the description so you guys can also, I can get you guys in contact with them. Or you guys can just follow Real Orlando and People's Free Kitchen on Instagram and they'll be able to do that for you and, and direct you in the right direction. So I think this is awesome. Uh, what kind of what kind of pumpkins are these or 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 squash? They're seminal pumpkins. Okay. Um, they can be used in similar ways as squash. I've made like a butternut squash soup with them before. And I've never had that. Before. Oh my god, it's so yummy! Like creamy, really? very like autumnal spices. Oh. Okay. It's very good. Yeah. Um, Bet you are eating good for fall. And I don't know if you've been noticing, but we have seminal pumpkins, Everglades tomatoes. We try to focus on growing things that are kind of like known to grow really well in Florida. Hence the name of the seeds yes. and like the varieties. Got you. Okay. Also, we want to like make sure that in the long term when people... Oh, look. This is bigger. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look. There's a little pumpkin. Now. There's a bee. Oh. Yay. Okay. Thank you for your service. Mm-hmm. Um, you your favorite. I would say you don't know. Since a lot of this food is being used in the People's Free Kitchen program to give out um, to the people in the Paramore community, mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that we're growing stuff that people want to eat and not just things that, you know, look nice or are trendy right now. So um, we've grown like sorrel before, um, we've grown collards. Yeah, we want to make sure that this is stuff that people are, are interested in. So this is arugula down mm -hmm. here. Yeah. In the back, we've got green onions, some more cake. Oh, you guys got green onions? Oh, yeah, uh, I love those. Them. Look, green onions, yeah. Yeah, you have you have me at that. These are, these are I'm sorry, am I, am I staying on something no, I should? Okay. Those are, those are nice and pesty. We've got some babies coming in down there. Nice. Leaves, garlic in between. Garlic? Oh! Yeah, oh, my this, gosh. This is nice and uh, hearty. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, Are you guys going to be doing kale at all? I don't know if, um, does kale grow pretty well yeah, here? In I, this Florida? Kale. Yeah, we've grown a couple varieties of okay. kale in the past. I believe this is, I believe this is kale. Or is this collards? <laughs> good, good to know. <laughs> good okay. question. Um, but then we had broccoli back here. You can see some of it. Broccoli! Yeah, being, um, like its last bit, we harvested it last week and then we had a, a big head of cauliflower that we pulled out. Wow. Just like, chop this guy. Wow. Broccoli. I look, we are a fan of broccoli in my house. Yeah, for sure. Just some some olive oil, a little bit of garlic, some and some you know, Himalayan pink salt mm -hmm. and some pepper and we're good. Yeah. Like saute. Or I'll I'll eat this raw in a salad. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, all of these things, I'll pick up a plant and eat them. They won't even make it to cooking. They should, but they don't. They don't. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find some little bugs. We've got really mm -hmm. great critters at the farm. I don't know if anyone's mm -hmm. a fan of that, but I uh, I love a beetle. <laughs> but I think I'm not a fan of, uh, of bugs, <coughs> per se, oh, but, but <laughs> for the sake of my audience, I am willing to film it. So do you guys also try to import input some bugs that kind of fight the pests Predator, a little bit? Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all have ever had to do that. I don't think so. No, mm -hmm. I think I think there's been um, yeah a good amount of like natural predators. So we have certain pests. A lot of the times we have weevils mm -hmm. or some beetles that um, will like chew up the the leaves. You can see a lot of mm -hmm. these holes in the mustard greens. They're caused by caterpillars. Mm -hmm. um, we might find some. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, maybe they've gotten their fill. Oh look, so this is a weevil. I think it's called a Sri Lankan weevil. Oh. She's so beautiful, but she is a pest, unfortunately. Hey, girlie, please stop eating our uh, lettuce. Oh. But they are everywhere. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Um, but we've also found like wasps here that can be predators um, in a beneficial way for us. We've found praying mantises before. Um, okay. So yeah, there's there's an ecosystem here already, which is amazing, and there's mm -hmm. um, you know pests that we we're trying to deal with in natural ways. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also been predators, insect predators, mm -hmm. trying to control those pests on their own that we haven't even introduced. So it's it's a living ecosystem on its own. That's awesome. Yeah. So how, what's the relationship what, like with the church here that is, uh, you know, allowing you guys to have this farm here? So I believe the connection was first made with La Semillas, the organization in Pine Hills that mm -hmm. does a lot of community work. They do the um, full moon drum circles. That's pretty popular, but they do a lot of other work in the local Pine Hills community. Mm -hmm. and so I believe um, the person that runs Last he was able to get us in connection with this church mm -hmm. um, and the pastor here, and that relationship is what um, the farm came out of. So mm -hmm. it was kind of the person saying, uh, providing us with the person who has the space mm -hmm. um, for the farm and has the land and um, giving us that access, and then us with the need, mm -hmm. we wanted a space to grow food yeah. and have a farm. So. And, and that really just encourages them. I mean, even from just a theology standpoint, mm -hmm. what you're doing is something that, you know, a lot of them, you know, in Christian churches or would it be, you know, mosques or synagogues that they believe that, you know, uh, uh, the giving, you know, to the people and you got you all share those same sentiments as yeah. well. You may not have the same exact beliefs, you know, for some of the people of the group could be atheists, but the belief is shared that is for the people. Mm -hmm. And so that's... It is a, a beautiful, you know, connection. And yeah. we're not here to exclude anyone or any, mm -hmm. make anyone feel included or anything like that. Also, sure. this church, Rise Up, does a great job of um, community events on their own and, and giving back to the community as well. They do a lot of food drives here nice. and resource drives for <laughs> community so mm -hmm. we're definitely aligned in those values of like yeah. bringing people together giving them an opportunity to help each other so. yeah and really they're doing what because I, I i used to be a christian so i and i preached door to door for over 20 years but that's something that is uh something that is really aligned with their beliefs mm -hmm. so it's beautiful to see people who may not share the same faith but they're doing you know, the same type of work in order to help out. This is something I think that is one of the reasons why people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and people like Malcolm X, that, that honed them in on this about self-determination of the people and being able to have their own means of production. Right. I think that's something that has been a, a wonderful facet to see that it goes across religion, across faiths, you know, and even people who are atheists, it does not matter mm -hmm. because we all share the same sense of so an example of the church being, you know, part of the community and giving back, they get a lot of food donations for those food distributions in um, the area. Sometimes they have an excess of distributions or things are starting to rot. Mm -hmm. So they actually dropped a bunch of red bell peppers into our little compost pile here. Okay. So one of the bigger goals today was to work the compost pile and, you know, cover it and get it introduced mm -hmm. into the actual mm -hmm. like organism work in, in gotcha. the compost pile so that they decompose mm -hmm. yeah. um, in a way that's you know effective and not just like rotting on top of the dirt. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a bigger, uh, like more uh, focused compost pile back here that we put a lot of... Oh, can you show me that? Yeah. Is this something that you're beginning to, or? This used to be a compost pile. So when we first broke ground, we had like a big trunk dump of a big batch of soil and compost here, and mm -hmm. then so we just like shovel it out of here and put it all through the farm. Nice. Aww, she looks so beautiful. Too. Yeah, it, it is. It is gorgeous. Yeah. We've got banana trees coming in. Banana trees. Time, but yeah, they putting them in the circle there helps like keep the nutrients flowing. Okay. The compost pile. Cool. Um, 
And this here, this whole corner here used to be full of shrubs and overgrown um, bushes and trees and stuff. And we have had our volunteers over the last few weeks clear it out um, and even cut down some of these trees. You can see the logs down yeah. here. So this area here is going to be more like a perennial section where we can put plants that are good to go on their own. They don't need as much attention as, you know, the veggie um, crops back there. Okay. So things like pineapples that, you know, grow on their own. Oh, these are pineapples? Yeah. We've got more Cuban oregano coming in. <laughs> Lemon grass. We want to do like more root vegetables like potatoes, sweet potatoes, things like that that we can just kind of leave on their own and then harvest when they're ready. Yeah, but my way will have a whole herb system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but the potatoes and sweet potatoes, I mean, those starches are also very important. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that is also very filling, so that's oh, yeah. going to be great. We love, we love starches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's getting it's getting worked on. It's coming up slowly but surely. Um, mm -hmm. And in the future, it'll be its own kind of like it's giving progress it's giving work in progress <laughs> yeah. no it's giving oh, progress permaculture. yeah it's in just in the future it'll be like permaculture -y yeah now. yeah it is going to be on its own kind of a thing but yeah this whole area was essentially this that you see mm -hmm. continued all the way through here okay. up until the last few weeks that people are volunteering Okay. Um, but yeah, so like this, the greens and stuff like that that come from there, the trimmings from the farm mm -hmm. can all go into that compost pile yeah. back here. Mm -hmm. And then we like flip and turn it every time we're here mm -hmm. to make sure um, things are breaking down properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, you'll see that we have broken down soil. So this is all, um, this is like the first section of the compost pile where things are still in their, you know, freshly cut off mm -hmm. state. It gets waxed and, and chopped and broken down as much as possible physically mm -hmm. it gets turned to promote um, aeration and, mm -hmm. and the organisms can get some um, air to like the worms and stuff it. yeah yeah and mm -hmm. then eventually it gets broken down further over here and then now we have fresh fertile soil to be used in the farm yep and then on top of it i mean we're in a perfect area like florida where i mean you we get that rain we get yeah. that you know uh Despite what you know, some people may believe that that thunder and lightning is also really good because it brings down the nitrogen, yeah. so that you know the plants can grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then you have that as well. So this is this is beautiful yeah. because. So thank you so much for watching. That was an amazing experience. Of course, the video cut off at the end. I, there was more conversation that happened that I thought I was capturing, but unfortunately. It did not, uh, I had some issues with the camera a little bit towards the end there. But for the most part, that was the gist, that was the fully encompassing of the experience at the farm as well. And so that was amazing. Uh, so, so many different types of food that they're doing there as far as produce. They're also planning to expand, especially with the starches. I cannot wait to see that there. And I will be trying to make my way over to the People's Free Kitchen to help them out in their cooking as well as interview some of the people who are doing some of the cooking on the ground as well. So I cannot wait to talk to them there. Uh, stay tuned for that because when that comes out, then I'll also be doing that too. So thank you so very much to everybody for tuning in. I just want you guys to really think about what you could be doing within your city, your county, your town, in order to be able to build up class solidarity, to build up your community so that not only are you helping them, but to create a dual power. And one of the things that was honed in on is food sovereignty. I think that's very important, especially for us. That is a very revolutionary act and it's something that is deeply important so that we can ha take the fundamentals of our material needs and have control of it over our own lives. And so thank you once again to Real Orlando for having me. I felt like a honored guest being among you and I cannot wait to come back to be able to share what 
uh, you guys are doing even further and so please stay tuned to the channel as well just a shout out to all the patrons on patreon and the patrons on coffee as well as anybody that sends me any mutual aid via paypal thank you so very much and also just let you guys know again if you guys would like to you guys can also subscribe to my Substack so you guys can get these email notifications as well so thank you so very much i want to say water your plants water yourselves leave the world better than you found it smoke them if you got them drink them if you got them grow them if you got them right because food sovereignty is revolutionary and shout out to all of you who are doing the damn thing on the ground and mwah, forehead kisses thank you very much i will see you in the next one take care love bye bye Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.